Hi hey everyone, today's lesson is going to be very, very fast, and the reason it's going to be fast is because during the regular school year, yesterday's lesson on kinetic energy and today's work is actually one lesson. So I split it into two parts just because I know you're sort of learning on your own and you want to approach things a little bit slower. Um, but what I would have said if this was the regular classroom, I would have started off yesterday's lesson with the idea that there are two types of energy. There are There's kinetic energy and there's potential energy. Kinetic energy is energy that's in motion. So when you release, an ob or release energy and you get movement, you get speed, that's kinetic. Potential is stored energy. And I actually wrote a definition here before I even turned the camera on that you can copy down. Uh, potential energy is stored energy that is waiting to be released. So it's it will cause movement of objects and objects to reach certain speeds but it's stored and awaiting that release or another way of saying it is it has the potential to be released so it's exactly the way that the word sounds there are three sort of main types that i guess you study in school especially in high school uh, there's elastic energy and elastic is actually a science word. It's, it's not a word for a rubber band, but elastic energy is when you stretch something. So yes, an elastic band would be a good example of elastic energy. You stretch an elastic out and you hold it in a stretched position. It's got the ability to turn into kinetic energy if you let it go. But in the meantime, it's got elastic potential energy. And actually I probably should have stuck the word potential right in there. So elastic potential energy, uh, chemical potential energy is obviously a very big one. That's the entire science of chemistry. So chemical potential energy, we can store energy in chemical bonds and that energy can be released and cause the movement of objects. So gasoline is a perfect example. That's what eventually moves your car is when the chemical bonds in gasoline um, explode um, exothermically and release that energy. And your body is a good example of chemical potential energy. Your fat cells, you're storing energy in your fat, waiting to be released and waiting to um, move your, your muscles. And number three, the one we deal with specifically in this class this year is uh, gravitational. Gravitational potential energy. And that's actually what this lesson is. You can see at the top here, the title isn't potential energy, the title is gravitational potential energy because in grade 11 physics, that's the type of potential energy that we do. And it's probably the easiest calculation in the entire course. And that's why today's work is gonna be so fast. So what gravitational potential energy is, I guess I really didn't put any space on this page just to describe what it is. So you might wanna add it in. Gravitational potential energy is when you lift something up you give it a potential energy because when you let it go, it will fall. It will turn into motion as it accelerates back down to the ground. So by simply lifting something up off the surface of the earth, because we have a gravitational field, when you lift something up, you give it the potential to move as soon as you let it go. And it's a really, really quick formula that we're going to derive here for potential energy. Our normal energy formula that we started off with two days ago is work equals force times distance. And work is energy, so this is an energy formula. And if you actually did the textbook reading yesterday, they take this formula and turn it into the kinetic energy formula. Today, let's take that formula and turn it into uh, the gravitational potential energy formula. So what we're going to do specifically for this is, if you have the ground with an object on it, and you pick that object up and you lift it up to a certain point off the ground, you will give it gravitational potential energy. So you'll have to use a force to lift it up. And if you're going to lift something up on earth, you have to apply a force that at least has to overcome the regular force that's down. And we know what that downward force is. That's the force of gravity. So if you're going to lift something up, you have to apply a force that is at least equal to the force of gravity. So let's 
stick that right into the formula here. It is work equals force times distance, but more specifically, it's gonna be, in our case, for this particular formula, force of gravity times distance. And the formula for force of gravity is mg. So mg times distance. Now, because in uh, gravitational questions, the distance that you move something is always up off the ground. That's the whole point of gravitational potential energy is you're lifting something. We could leave it as a distance in the formula, but the choice has been made to specifically call this distance a lowercase h for height. So the formula ends up being mass times gravity or mass times um, gravitational acceleration. And then you multiply it by the height you're lifting it up to. And that's it. Um, it starts off as a work formula, but work is energy. So at this point, I will instead make the left-hand side a capital E, specifically since we want this to be more of an energy formula rather than a work formula. And again, in the lower right-hand corner, every time you write a capital E, there are so many different forms of energy that in the lower right-hand corner, you want to put some little letter to indicate what type it is. Yesterday, it was a little K for kinetic. Today, put a little G for gravitational and that is the formula for gravitational potential energy. A very easy formula. I guess I've got way too much space here. And just at the bottom to represent what these variables are one more time, where M in that formula is mass. We've used it so many times. It has to have units of kilograms or you won't get questions right. Uh, the G in that formula is, I can't really fit it in this tiny little space, but G is gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second on Earth, or sorry, per second squared on Earth. Whoops, and I guess I already wrote the units there. It's meters per second squared, or you could use newtons per kilogram, since you can flip-flop between those units whenever you want. And where H, I guess this is the only really new variable, where H is you have to kind of know in your own head that H is a distance that you've actually moved when you lift something up, but it's height. And it's a standard metric length, the same as any other standard metric length that has to have units of meters or it's not going to work and you're not gonna get the right answers. Rather than have you do homework today, this, this formula is so easy and it's so easy to rearrange it for different variables because everything on the right hand side is multiplication. There are no exponents, there's no square roots or anything like that. What I chose today, just to make the work today short and easy, is the three examples that we were going to do together. I'm gonna to leave them for you to do as questions. I don't think you even need examples for this formula. So there are three questions attached to today's work. One of them just gets you to calculate uh, gravitational energy. One of them gets you to rearrange this formula and solve for a mass instead. And one of them gets you to rearrange this formula and solve for a height instead. And just watch your units because I noticed when I skimmed the three examples over, there's a couple different units that need to be changed. And the final example has a value missing. You need to look it up. And that's a, a standard skill that you need to have in physics class and any type of engineering program is when you need a value you just look it up online the last question deals with the giant ferris wheel on clifton hill and you need the height of that ferris wheel so do a quick little uh, internet search it's called the niagara sky wheel and you'll have the height to use in that question